beloved president sri b v gopal reddy ji to address uh, to give the welcome address and president sri remark thank you ellarku namaskara shri piyush goel ji honorable union minister of commerce and industry textiles consumer affairs food and civil food and uh, public distribution government of india k sudhakar honorable minister of health family welfare and medical education government of karnataka p c mohan member of parliament bangalore central and uh, ramesh chandra lotti senior vice president fkcci mg balakrishna vice president fkcci trivikram joshi skill development uh, development committee fkcci is prasad immediate past president fkcci Kamal Bali, President, Director of Volvo Group of Companies, and the Chairman, CII, Southern Region. My dear esteemed past president and the members of FSA, honorable guests, present and friends from uh, present media, it is my pleasure to welcome the honorable minister, Peesh Goelji, for gracing today's interactive meeting. I extend a warm welcome to all of you present. founded by bharat ratna shri m vishweshwara eminent engineer and a statesman the visionary once again industrial visionary once said industrial or perish emphasizes the importance of trade and development of industries which brought in a early awareness about the impact of trade and commerce on behalf of fkcci and the self i would like to congratulate and thank you on an excellent international policy which address to promote ease of doing business boost of the exports mobilize each district and achieve the potential of an export hub and make amendments in a persistent trade imbalance by improving the diplomatic service and the manufacturing sector thereby positioning india in the top 5 six countries sir once again we thankful for epgc amnesty scheme which will help the exporter an opportunity to pay lower duty and interest and also continue doing the business in this schedule is being blessing to the exporter community i would also like to take this opportunity to assure you that fkcci will be in forefront in supporting the government on employment generation social security and social upliftment of the man marginalized classes today meeting will be very significant on deliberating on various issue faced by the commerce and industry sector here in karnataka we have with us today honorable minister shri peesh goel ji along with him we have dr sudhakar honorable minister and uh, honorable minister of health pc mohan member of parliament and uh, c kesh kesh nagar she is not there uh, shri sir karnataka was the first state to introduce a state specific specific industrial policy from 1980 1983 the first state to formulate the state level export promotion policy and become the aerospace hub aerospace aerospace hub it was also a first state to come out with a 10 year specific aero policy and a pharmaceutical policy and one of the first to release a state startup policy though there are many first we still require a support of the government for msme sector by streamlining the various support process yes cases i would like to thank government and enhancing the cgst msme schemes from 2 uh, cro crores to 5 crores the government has given immense incentives for msme sector but the benefits are not reaching the deserving msme units there is a need for providing comprehensive plans to safeguard the msme msmes similarly the textile and garment industries has to be assisted by providing the special incentives food processing industry especially millet processing as promising scenario in karnataka karnataka is also a leading producer of millet based products millets are also fast consumed products in india as well as abroad hence fkcci request the government to introduce special incentive schemes for millet processing and allied industries fkcc would like to ensure district wise millet processing industry growth under one district one product scheme over the past few years 
exporters have soared tremendously on the back of, back of robust manufacturing in several sectors and an enabling policy landscape. Additionally, additionally, despite the fact that the world economy is expected to slow down because of ongoing global <coughs> headwinds and the resulting supply chain disruption, our country will only see a minor impact. There are some of the issues which request to be addressed on priority. We hope this interactive meeting will be very informative for the members and request the members present to discuss one re related subject. Thank you, one and all. Thank you, President. Now I request Honorable Minister to inaugurate the session by lighting the lamp. Thank you, Honorable Minister, and all the dignitaries on the dais for uh, mm, lighting the lamp and inaugurating the session. I request Honorable our President Gopala DJ and all the office bearer to felicitate our Honorable Minister on behalf of FKCCI. to felicitate our beloved Minister of Karnataka Government, Dr. K. Sudhakar, sir. President and all office bearers to felicitate our beloved member of parliament, Sri P.C. Mohan, sir. Thank you, President and all the office bearers. Now I request our Sri P.C. Monsa, Member of Parliament, to address the gathering up to two minutes. Hello, Rigo. Namaskara. Yuvatina. Even though Chunavane Sandarb Dali in election manifesto Marta Dui Karikramake. Daily in the Agam Sirwantaha, Namakendra Mantrigolo, Hiriru Adanta, Shri Piyush Goenji Rode, Karnataka, Aroke Sachiro, Atmiro Adantaha, Doctor Sudakar Rode, FKCC and Addikshuru, Atmir Adanta, Gopal Reddy Rode, Balakrishna Rode, Ayes Prasad Rode, Ramesh Chandra Rode, Trilok Trivikrama Joshi Rode, Ago Libandra Takanta, Ella Industrial Stigle, Traders Rode, 
ಹಾಗೂ ಬಂದಿರತಕ್ಕಂಥ ಎಲ್ಲ ನನ್ನ ಆತ್ಮೀಯರೇ ಎಲ್ಲರಿಗೂ ನಮಸ್ಕಾರ ಭಾರತೀಯ ಜನತಾ ಪಾರ್ಟಿ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿದ್ರೆ ಒಂದು ಯಾವತ್ತು ಜನರ ಜೊತೆ ಇರುವಂತಹ ಒಂದು ಪಕ್ಷ ಇವತ್ತು ಮೇ ಹತ್ತನೇ ತಾರೀಕು ಚುನಾವಣೆ ಬರ್ತಾ ಇದೆ ಈ ಒಂದು ಚುನಾವಣೆಯ ಪ್ರಯುಕ್ತ ಜನಗಳಿಗೆ ಒಂದು ಮ್ಯಾನಿಫೆಸ್ಟೋ ಕೊಡಬೇಕು ಜನಗಳಿಗೆ ಒಂದು ಸೌಕರ್ಯವನ್ನು ಕೊಡಬೇಕು ಅಂಥೇಳಿ ಜನಗಳ ಬಳಿಯೇ ಬಂದು ಇವತ್ತು ಜನಗಳ ಸಲಹೆ ಪಡಿತಾ ಇದ್ದೀವಿ ತಮಗೆಲ್ಲ ಗೊತ್ತಿರೋ ಹಾಗೆ ಇದೇ ಒಂದು ಎಫ್ ಕೆ ಸಿ ಸಿ ಐನಲ್ಲಿ ನಿನ್ನೆಲ್ಲ ಮೊನ್ನೆ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಸುಧಾಕರ್ ಅವರ ನೇತೃತ್ವದಲ್ಲಿ ಹೋಟೆಲ್ ಓನರ್ಸ್ ಅಸೋಸಿಯೇಷನ್ದು ಕೂಡ ಒಂದು ಮೀಟಿಂಗ್ ಆಯಿತು ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಕೂಡ ಸಲಹೆಗಳನ್ನು ಪಡೆದಿದ್ದಾಯಿತು ನಿನ್ನೆ ನಿರ್ಮಲಾ ಸೀತಾರಾಮನ್ ಅವರು ಕೂಡ ಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಸ್ ಪ್ರಾಕ್ಟೀಷನರ್ಸು ಮತ್ತು ಬೇರೆ ವಿವಿಧ ಸಂಘಟನೆಗಳ ಜೊತೆ ಕೂಡ ನಿರ್ಮಲಾ ಸೀತಾರಾಮನ್ ಅವರು ಒಂದು ಇಂಟ್ರಾಕ್ಷನ್ ಸೆಷನ್ ಕೂಡ ಮಾಡಿದರು ಇವತ್ತು ಟ್ರೇಡರ್ಸು ಮತ್ತು ಇಂಡಸ್ಟ್ರಿಯಲಿಸ್ಟ್ಗಳ ಜೊತೆ ಇವತ್ತು ಪಿಯೂಷ್ ಗೋಯಲ್ಜಿ ಅವರು ಮತ್ತು ಸುಧಾಕರ್ ಅವರು ತಮ್ಮ ಜೊತೆ ಒಂದು ಇಂಟ್ರಾಕ್ಷನ್ ಸೆಷನ್ ಇದೆ ಇವತ್ತು ನಮ್ಮ ಭಾರತೀಯ ಜನತಾ ಪಾರ್ಟಿ ಏನೊಂದು ಎಲೆಕ್ಷನ್ ಇರೋದರಿಂದ ಸುಮಾರು ಇನ್ನೂರ ಇಪ್ಪತ್ತ್ನಾಲ್ಕು ಕ್ಷೇತ್ರಗಳಲ್ಲೂ ಕೂಡ ಈ ತರಹ ಎಲೆಕ್ಷನ್ ಮ್ಯಾನುಫ್ಯಾಕ್ಚರ್ ಮಾ ಏನೇನು ಆಗಬೇಕು ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿ ಕ್ಷೇತ್ರದ ಅನುಗುಣವಾಗಿ ಮಾಡಲಿಕ್ಕೆ ಎಲ್ಲರ ಹತ್ರ ಕೂಡ ನಾವು ಸಲಹೆಗಳನ್ನು ತಗೊಳ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದೀವಿ ಅದೇ ರೀತಿ ತಮಗೆ ಗೊತ್ತಿರೋ ಹಾಗೆ ಸುಮಾರು ಎಂಟು ಸಾವಿರ ಜಾಗಗಳಲ್ಲೂ ಕೂಡ ನಾವು ವಿವಿಧ ರೀತಿಗಳಲ್ಲಿ ನಾವು ಒಂದು ಸಲಹೆಗಳನ್ನು ತಗೊಂಡು ಬೇರೆ ಬೇರೆ ಜಾಗಗಳಲ್ಲಿ ಸಾರ್ವಜನಿಕ ಜಾಗಗಳಲ್ಲೂ ಕೂಡ ನಾವು ಸಲಹೆಗಳನ್ನು ತಗೊಂಡು ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದೀವಿ ತಮಗೆ ಗೊತ್ತಿರೋ ಹಂಗೆ ಕರ್ನಾಟಕದಲ್ಲಿ ಡಬಲ್ ಇಂಜಿನ್ ಸರ್ಕಾರದಿಂದ ಕಳೆದ ಯಡಿಯೂರಪ್ಪನವರ ಸರ್ಕಾರದಲ್ಲಿ ಹಾಗೂ ಮತ್ತು ಬಸವರಾಜ ಬೊಮ್ಮಾಯಿಯವರ ಒಂದು ಸರ್ಕಾರದಲ್ಲಿ ಅನೇಕ ಕೆಲಸಗಳಾಗಿವೆ ಕಳೆದ ಎಪ್ಪತ್ತೈದು ವರ್ಷಗಳಲ್ಲಿ ಆಗದಿರೋವಂಥ ಕೆಲಸ ಕಳೆದ ಒಂದು ಮೂರು ವರ್ಷಗಳಲ್ಲಿ ಕೂಡ ಕರ್ನಾಟಕದ ಸರ್ಕಾರ ಭಾರತೀಯ ಜನತಾ ಪಾರ್ಟಿ ಜನಕ್ಕೆ ಕೊಟ್ಟಿದೆ ತಮಗೆಲ್ಲ ಗೊತ್ತಿರೋ ಹಾಗೆ ಏನು ಬೆಂಗಳೂರು ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿದ್ರೆ ಒಂದು ಟ್ರಾಫಿಕ್ಗೆ ಎಲ್ಲರೂ ಕೂಡ ಮಾತಾಡುವಂತಹ ಒಂದು ಇದಿತ್ತು ಬ್ಯಾಂಗ್ಳೂರು ಅಂತ ಒಪ್ಪ ಟ್ರಾಫಿಕ್ ಅಪ್ಪ ಬರಬೇಕಾ ಏನು ಅಂತ ಹೇಳ್ತಿದ್ರು ಆದರೆ ನರೇಂದ್ರ ಮೋದಿ ಅವರು ಏನೊಂದು ನಲವತ್ತು ವರ್ಷದ ಏನೊಂದು ಕನಸಿತ್ತೋ ಅದನ್ನು ನಲವತ್ತು ವರ್ಷಗಳಲ್ಲಿ ಪೂರೈಸ್ತೀನಿ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿ ಸಬಬಂದು ಕೂಡ ಬೆಂಗಳೂರು ಮಹಾನಗರಕ್ಕೆ ಕೊಟ್ಟಿದ್ದು ಕೂಡ ತಾವೆಲ್ಲರೂ ಕೂಡ ಇದು ಕೇಳಿದ್ದೀವಿ ಅದಕ್ಕೆ ಕಳೆದ ಬಜೆಟಲ್ಲೂ ಕೂಡ ಸಾವಿರದ ಮುನ್ನೂರು ಕೋಟಿ ಕೇಂದ್ರದಲ್ಲಿ ಕೊಟ್ಟರು ಸಾವಿರ ಕೋಟಿ ರೂಪಾಯಿ ನಿಮಗೆ ರಾಜ್ಯ ಸರ್ಕಾರದಿಂದ ಬಂತು ಇದೇ ರೀತಿ ಮೆಟ್ರೋಗೆ ಕೂಡ ಏನೊಂದು ಏರ್ಪೋರ್ಟ್ ಕನೆಕ್ಟಿವಿಟಿ ಕೂಡ ಏನೊಂದು ಹೆಚ್ಚಿನ ಅನುದಾನವನ್ನು ಕೊಟ್ಟು ಮೆಟ್ರೋ ಕೂಡ ಮಾಡಿರುವಂಥದ್ದನ್ನು ಕೂಡ ತಾವು ನೋಡಿರ್ಬೋದು ಈ ತರಹ ಅನೇಕ ಕೆಲಸಗಳು ಇವತ್ತು ಭಾರತೀಯ ಜನತಾ ಪಾರ್ಟಿಯಲ್ಲಿ ಆಗ್ತಾ ಇದೆ ಯಾವತ್ತು ಭಾರತೀಯ ಜನತಾ ಪಾರ್ಟಿ ಅಂದರೆ ಚುನಾವಣೆಗಳು ಚುನಾವಣೆಯಿಂದ ಚುನಾವಣೆ ಗೆಲ್ಲೋದಲ್ಲ ಜನರಿಗೆ ಏನು ಅನುಕೂಲ ಆಗಬೇಕು ಅನ್ನೋದು ಬಹಳ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟು ಅದಕ್ಕೇ ಇವತ್ತು ನಾವೆಲ್ಲರೂ ಕೂಡ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಬಂದು ತಮ್ಮ ಸಲಹೆಯನ್ನು ತಗೊಳ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದೀವಿ ತಾವು ಸಲಹೆಗಳು ಮತ್ತು ಏನನ್ನು ಅದರ ಜೊತೆಗೆ ಏನನ್ನು ಪ್ರಶ್ನೆಗಳಿದ್ದರೂ ಕೂಡ ಪಿಯೂಷ್ ಗೋಲ್ಜಿ ಅವರ ಹತ್ರ ಕೇಳ್ಬೋದು ಅಂತ ಹೇಳ್ತಾ ಇವತ್ತಿನ ಕಾರ್ಯಕ್ರಮದಲ್ಲಿ ಎಫ್ ಕೆ ಸಿ ಸಿ ಅವರು ಇಷ್ಟೊಂದು ಜನಗಳ ಒಂದು ಕಾರ್ಯಕ್ರಮದಲ್ಲಿ ಕರೆಸಿ ನಮ್ಮೆಲ್ಲರ ಜೊತೆ ಒಂದು ಸಂವಾದ ಮಾಡಲಿಕ್ಕೆ ಕರೆದಿರುವಂಥ ಎಫ್ ಕೆ ಸಿ ಅಧ್ಯಕ್ಷರಿಗೆ ವಂದಿಸಿ ನನ್ನ ಮಾತನ್ನು ಮುಗಿಸಿ ನಮಸ್ಕಾರ ಅಭಿವೃದ್ಧಿ ಪರವಾದ ಆಡಳಿತವನ್ನು ಕೊಡ್ತಕ್ಕಂಥ ನರೇಂದ್ರ ಮೋದಿಯವರ ಸರ್ಕಾರದ ಹರಿಕಾರರಾಗಿ ಬಂದು ನಮ್ಮನ್ನು ಉದ್ದೇಶಿಸಿ ಮಾತಾಡಿದ ನಮ್ಮೆಲ್ಲರ ಆತ್ಮೀಯರಾದಂಥ ಲೋಕಸಭಾ ಸದಸ್ಯರ ಪಿ ಸಿ ಮೋಹನ್ ಅವರಿಗೆ ಧನ್ಯವಾದಗಳು ಈಗ ನಮ್ಮವರೇ ರಾಜ್ಯ ಸರ್ಕಾರದ ಮಂತ್ರಿಗಳು ಕ್ರಿಯಾಶೀಲರು ಯುವಕರು ಹಾಗೂ ಹೊಸ ಆಯಾಮವನ್ನು ವೈದ್ಯಕೀಯ ಶಿಕ್ಷಣ ರಂಗ ವೈದ್ಯಕೀಯ ರಂಗಕ್ಕೆ 
ಸ್ವಾಗತ ಮತ್ತು ಅಭಿನಂದನೆಯನ್ನು ಸಲ್ಲಿಸ್ತಾ ಮಾಧ್ಯಮ ಗೆಳೆಯರೇ ಇವತ್ತು ಫ್ರಮ್ ಬೀಂಗ್ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ಅಸ್ ಫ್ರೆಜೈಲ್ ಫೈ ಬಿಕಮಿಂಗ್ ಅ ಫಿಫ್ತ್ ಲಾರ್ಜೆಸ್ಟ್ ಎಕಾನಮಿ ಇನ್ ದ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ಅವರ್ ಬೆಲುವರ್ಡ್ ಪ್ರೈಮ್ ಮಿನಿಸ್ಟರ್ ಶ್ರೀ ನರೇಂದ್ರ ಮೋದಿಜಿ ಆಸ್ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ಫಾರ್ಮ್ಡ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ಇನ್ ದ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ನೈನ್ ಇಯರ್ಸ್ in his address recent address to the parliament prime minister was saying today the world is looking at india for its prosperity and i would like to add it's not an exaggeration i am sure you'll agree with me if i say that india is looking at karnataka for its prosperity and we are really fortunate as kannadigas because those who were born in this land uh the seeds of development the progress and prosperity were sown uh, centuries ago the modern architect of our uh, development and progress was laid a strong foundation by our nalwadi krishnaraj wadayachi we cannot forget his contribution for the development and prosperity of karnataka i would like to quote uh, uh, from divan sir mirza ismail in his book my public life he said we are very proud of the products of these factories mysoreans wash themselves using mysore sandal soaps and they dry using Uh, the mysore towels and similarly they also clothe themselves in mysore silks ride mysore horses eat the abundant mysore food drink mysore coffee using mysore sugar equip their houses with mysore furniture light them with mysore lamps and write their letters on mysore paper so this clearly is an evidence and testimony for the kind of industrialization that karnataka the land of karnataka had always posed faith in so ever since centuries ago till date Karnataka is the land of opportunity especially for industrialization it's being rightly called as startup capital bangalore being a startup capital of the country it capital of the country and today semiconductors industry is also coming up in a very big way and we have more than 400 research and development centers and we have more than 400 fortune 500 companies set up in bangalore and this speaks volumes about uh, the prosperity of this state and we have a abundant talent pool hr is abundant we have many engineering colleges and uh, the polytechnic colleges we have indian institute of science institutions like isro uh cv raman institute so these are all the added uh additions for the growth of uh, you know science and technology and rightly we have a esteemed guest amongst us who can really elaborate of how this country is progressing because i was looking at figures about unemployment people are talking about employment when i looked at the un- unemployment percentage karnataka ranks the least amongst many other states we have just over 2.5% unemployment issue in karnataka so that means to say karnataka is doing well on that employment angle also and in the recently concluded uh, uh, gym summit uh, we we had an agreement we had a mou worth more than 9.5 lakh crores for the investments so the ease of doing things in karnataka we have a very good uh, policies in place 
and our honorable chief minister our industry minister they are trying to do their best to attract uh, the fdi especially post covid scenario karnataka and Ga india especially india we have regained we have quickly we are back in action the economical growth i think there is no other country in the world uh, which has come to so much normalcy that india has come and karnataka even in health sector because i am a health minister i would like to say very few things about health sector uh, by 2024 people estimate that there could uh, be almost like 400 billion us dollars uh, for the healthcare industry alone in this uh, country so i feel that people must get into healthcare startups there are a lot of health startups already in bangalore and uh, health startups have played a pivotal role in fueling this growth and as startup capital of india bengaluru has been at the forefront of developing innovative sustainable and flexible solutions to long standing challenges so karnataka government aims to expand the footprint of itbt sector beyond bengaluru to other uh, tier 2 and tier 3 cities as well our government also believes in philosophy of public private partnership uh, to improve our public health care system in the state karnataka has been a pioneer when it comes to science and technology as i already said uh, we are open to work with startups msmes and large enterprises to fill the gaps in the public health care system ಈಗಾಗಲೇ ಮಾನ್ಯ ಪಿ ಸಿ ಮೋಹನ್ಜಿ ಅವರು ಹೇಳ್ದಂಗೆ ನಮ್ಮ ಪಕ್ಷ ಜನರ ಪಕ್ಷ ಆಗಿದೆ ಹಾಗಾಗಿ ನಮ್ಮ ಪ್ರಣಾಳಿಕೆ ಜನರಿಂದ ಬರುವಂಥ ಸಲಹೆಗಳು ಜನರಿಂದ ಜನರಿಗೋಸ್ಕರ ಜನರಿಗಾಗಿ ನಾವು ಇವತ್ತು ಈ ಪ್ರಣಾಳಿಕೆಯನ್ನು ನಾವು ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದೇವೆ ಹಾಗಾಗಿ ನಿಮ್ಮೆಲ್ಲರ ಒಂದು ಸಲಹೆಗಳು ಭಾಳ ಮುಖ್ಯ ನಮಗೆ ಅದನ್ನು ಗಂಭೀರವಾಗಿ ತೆಗೆದುಕೊಳ್ತೀವಿ ಇವತ್ತು ಸಣ್ಣ ಮಧ್ಯಮ ಭಾರಿ ಕೈಗಾರಿಕೆಗಳ ಪ್ರಗತಿ ಹೇಗಾಗಬೇಕು ಈ ರಾಜ್ಯದಲ್ಲಿ ಹೆಚ್ಚು ಹೆಚ್ಚು ಉದ್ಯೋಗವನ್ನು ಯಾವ ರೀತಿ ಸೃಷ್ಟಿ ಮಾಡಬೇಕು ಹಾಗಾಗಿ ಸಮಾನತೆ ಯಾವ ರೀತಿ ಕಾಪಾಡಬೇಕು ಹೀಗೆ ಈ ಹತ್ತು ಹಲವಾರು ಸಲಹೆಗಳನ್ನು ಮತ್ತು ಮಾರುಕಟ್ಟೆ ನಿರ್ಮಾಣ ಹೇಗೆ ಮಾಡಬೇಕು ರಫ್ತು ಹೇಗಾಗಬೇಕು ಇದೆಲ್ಲದರ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ತಾವೆಲ್ಲ ಕೂಡ ಬೆಳಕು ಚೆಲ್ಲಬೇಕು ನಮ್ಮ ಮಾನ್ಯ ಮಂತ್ರಿಗಳು ಸುದೀರ್ಘವಾಗಿ ನಿಮ್ಮ ಜೊತೆ ಮಾತನಾಡು ಮಾತನಾಡಿ ಕೇಂದ್ರ ಸರ್ಕಾರದ ಯೋಜನೆಗಳು ಮತ್ತು ನೀತಿ ಇವೆಲ್ಲವನ್ನು ಕೂಡ ಮಾನ್ಯ ಪಿಯೂಷ್ ಗೋಯಲ್ಜಿ ಅವರು ಹೇಳ್ತಾರೆ ಇವತ್ತು ತಾವೆಲ್ಲ ಕೂಡ ಎಫ್ ಕೆ ಸಿ ಸಿ ಐನವರು ಭಾಳ ಜನ ಭಾಳ ಬೇಗ ಬಂದಿದ್ದೀರಿ ಅಂತ ಅನಿಸುತ್ತೆ ನನಗೆ ನಾಲ್ಕುವರೆಗೆ ಇದ್ದಂಥ ಸಭೆ ಅನಿವಾರ್ಯ ಕಾರಣಗಳಿಂದ ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ತಡ ಆಗಿದೆ ತಮ್ಮನ್ನೆಲ್ಲ ಕೂಡ ನಾನು ಅದಕ್ಕೆ ಕ್ಷಮೆಯನ್ನು ಆಚಿಸ್ತೇನೆ ಮಾನ್ಯ ಪಿಯೂಷ್ ಗೋಯಲ್ಜಿ ಅವರ ಅನೇಕ ಒತ್ತಡದಿಂದ ಕೂಡಿರ್ತಕ್ಕಂಥ ಕಾರ್ಯಕ್ರಮಗಳ ಕಾರಣ ನಾವು ತಡವಾಗಿ ಬಂದಿದ್ದೇವೆ ಹಾಗಾಗಿ ಇವತ್ತು ನೀವೆಲ್ಲ ಕೂಡ ಭಾಗವಹಿಸಿರೋದಕ್ಕೆ ಎಫ್ ಕೆ ಸಿ ಸಿ ಅವರು ಆತಿಥ್ಯವನ್ನು ವಹಿಸಿರೋದಕ್ಕೆ ನಾನು ಹೃದಯಪೂರ್ವಕವಾದಂಥ ಅಭಿನಂದನೆ ನಿಮಗೂ ಕೂಡ ಸಲ್ಲಿಸಿ ನನ್ನ ಮಾತನ್ನು ಮುಗಿಸ್ತೀನಿ ನಮಸ್ಕಾರ ಧನ್ಯವಾದಗಳು ಸರ್ ತಮ್ಮ ಪ್ರೋತ್ಸಾಹಕರ ನುಡಿಗೆ ಶ್ರೀ ಪಿಯೂಷ್ ಗೋಯಲ್ ಜಿ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಬೀನ್ ಎ ಡ್ರೈವಿಂಗ್ ಫೋರ್ಸ್ behind several landmark initiatives in the areas of infrastructure energy and industry his contribution towards the implementation of gst the launch of udai scheme and the electrification of remote villages in is commendable under his leadership the indian railways has undergone a massive transformation with several key reforms aimed at enhancing customer experience improving safety and increasing efficiency under his leadership the ministry of commerce and industry has undertaken several initiatives aimed at boosting trade and commerce improving the ease of doing business and promoting innovation and entrepreneurship sri piyush goel ji has been a key proponent of technology driven growth and his focus on integrating technology in various sectors has been commendable amongst us he is with us i request honorable minister sri piyush goel ji to address us thank you sir.
Thank you very much, Mr. Joshi, Mr. Gopal Reddy, the president of the FKCCI, Dr. Sudhakar, Honorable Health Minister, Government of Karnataka, my colleague in the parliament, Sri P.C. Mohan, Member of Parliament, Sri Ramesh Chandra Lahuti, Senior Vice President of FKCCI, Sri M.G. Balakrishnan, Vice President of FKCCI, Dr. C.I.S. Prasad, Immediate Past President, Mr. Lokraj, Secretary General of FKCCI, all the distinguished office bearers, senior leaders of industry, captains of industry from Nama Bengaluru, <laughs> friends from the media, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Elarigu Namaskara. Always a delight to come to this beautiful city. It's so vibrant, ever evolving, full of dynamism, full of new ideas, and enthusiastic about the future of Bengaluru, about the future of Karnataka, and obviously all of this for a better future for our motherland, Bharat. <laughs> India is today witnessing unprecedented time. The world is looking up to India. Fastest growing large economy, a trusted partner for countries across the world, a democracy which offers the rule of law, transparent trading and business ecosystem, huge managerial talent, skill manpower, young population offering the demographic dividend which will power India's growth in the years to come. Huge opportunity in terms of consumer demand, domestic demand, which is growing rapidly as more and more people come into the middle class and become consumers of goods and services. And therefore, across the world, there's huge excitement when they look at India as a trading partner, as a partner for investments, and as a geopolitical partner amongst the developed world amongst developing countries. And the leadership of Prime Minister Narendra Modi is clearly head above shoulder across the world when we compare with any other global leader. In fact, for nine years in a row, he has been rated as the most popular leader in the entire world, something which has never been seen before. I was given to understand that earlier, the program was that I would do this meeting at 5 o'clock. My sincerest apologies to those who did not get intimation in time. But probably the state unit was not aware that I had a video conference fixed with my counterpart from the United States of America, Ms. Gina Raimondo, at 4.45. And therefore, it was positively impossible for me to do a program at 5. When my office came to know that they have announced uh, 4.30 or 5 for this program, I think yesterday that we did make an effort to reach out to everybody and inform them that it will be at 6.15. But for those who were not given intimation in time, I would like to apologize that there was this communication gap. 
but I'm sharing this with you because in the call that I had at, with uh, my colleague, and you might have seen her pictures on Holi, celebrating Holi at the residence of Honorable Raksha Mantri Sri Rajnath Singh Ji. She came here for a three-day visit, totally mesmerized at the progress that India was making. And even in the call that I had with her just now, she started by saying, that PM Modi is amazing. Exactly, I'm quote unquoting the word. The leadership that Prime Minister Modi has given to our country, the world today looks upon India as the bright spot who will drive global growth, who will drive economies around the world given the huge delta of opportunity that we have in India. And why do I say that we have this big delta of opportunity in India? Of course, Mr. Uh, Dr. Sudhakar was just mentioning about the very low unemployment levels in Bangalore and Karnataka. In fact, uh, most parts of the country, when you are looking for labor, it's very difficult to get people to come and work for you. Construction sites complain that they are not able to get enough labor. Farmers also are complaining that we don't get enough labor on our fields. Clearly, this is India's moment and if we don't seize the moment, it will only be for us to regret that we've lost a big opportunity. The country is rapidly progressing in terms of GDP, in terms of inclusive growth, bringing sustainability to India so that we can contribute to the global effort to fight against climate change and the challenges that it brings with it. And what did the Modi government do in the last nine years? We created a strong macroeconomic fundamental foundation on which the country can grow for decades in the future. Today, we have amongst the lowest inflation in the world. Our currencies, relative to most currencies, strengthened. Most other currencies have depreciated far more steeply to the US dollar. We've had our fair share of depreciation, but still moderate. Countries which used to have 1 or 2 percent inflation are grappling with double-digit inflation. Food inflation in UK was reported, last reported, to be 11.5 percent. India, which traditionally had double-digit inflation, has seen the lowest inflation in nine years of Modi government. Between four and a half, five percent. Despite the current crisis in the world, the Ukraine-Russia war and all the other difficulties that even developed nations are facing, our inflation is still in the six, six and a half percent band. So much so that the Reserve Bank of India governor yesterday complementing the collective efforts of government of India and of course the regulators has decided to maintain policy rates and not increase them while most other developed nations are increasing their interest rates. It's a big thumbs up for the Indian economy and good sign, good signal for Indian industry. And Prime Minister Modi, while strengthening the economy and the fundamentals of the economy, has looked at a holistic, inclusive vision. The last nine years, inflation has been low. We've seen record foreign direct investments for seven years in a row until 2022, March 2022. 
exports are growing. I'm sure you are aware that two years ago, our exports were $500 billion. In the year 21-22, from 500 billion, it grew to 676 billion in one year's time. That is almost 50 lakh crores. In the year 22-23, and while we are celebrating the 75 years of India's independence, Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav, it is appropriate that our exports cross the very important landmark of $750 billion. By latest estimates, it will even cross $765 billion. In a year in which global growth has been very, very timid, in fact, the World Bank or IMF outlook talked about international trade at about 1% last year. India has grown from 676 to nearly $765 billion. Nearly a $100 billion growth in a very difficult year. And mind you, it's not only services. Goods, merchandise exports has also grown. And services exports has also grown. And Bengaluru can be very proud of the fact that our services exports, which was $206 billion in 1920, sorry, 21 22, 2021, it was $206 billion in 2021, grew to $254 billion in 21 22 and is expected to be over 320 billion in the years that's gone by. So in a short span of two years, you saw goods grow from 294 to nearly 450 billion, and services grow from 206 to over 320 billion. That's the scorching pace in which our international engagement is growing. Our foreign exchange reserves are robust. While many countries are facing a crisis of foreign exchange, India has over $575 billion of foreign currency reserves. I think this will be enough even for the next five or six years, even without adding any more foreign exchange which of course is not going to happen. We'll keep adding more and more investments. We'll keep promoting exports of goods and services. We'll have foreign investments in the stock market, FII investments coming in. We'll have investments in the startup ecosystem. Remittances have crossed $100 billion. And all in all, as we strengthened our economy, we also took care of the needs of 140 crore Indians. After all, there was a time in the not too distant past when India used to grapple with problems of roti, kapda and makan, food, clothing and shelter were primary and uppermost concerns of the people of India and a large section of people of India. Education was not universal. Crores of our young boys and girls were not getting an opportunity to receive quality education. Healthcare was a matter of privilege. If in a poor person's family, somebody fell sick, his ability to provide him health, quality health care, his ability to fund his health care was very low. Very often the family savings would go away to cure a patient in the family or the family would be indebted 
in raising loans to maybe do a heart surgery or a kidney operation. Prime Minister Modi, who himself comes from very humble background, who has himself worked amongst the people as a karikarta, as a social worker, as a small common worker of the party, and we all know he has risen from the ranks. No privileged surname here. No distinctive godfathers. He's worked his way up the ranks. Through sheer dint of hard work and his capabilities. He knew the needs of the real India. भारत की आवश्यकताओं को वो पहचानते थे, and therefore his focus through the nine years, while strengthening the economy, while promoting industrialization, while ensuring the orderly growth of trade, business, commerce, industry, he ensured that no family ever has to sleep hungry in the country. Free food for the people of India under the Pradhan Mantri Garib Kalyan An Yojana. More particularly, extra food grains during COVID, 28 months, an additional 5 kilos, doubling the NFSC entitlement, free of cost, on which he spent 4 lakh crores of central government funding so that no child ever had to sleep hungry in this country. I don't know if you are aware. During the Spanish flu, it is reported that more people in India died of hunger than of the Spanish flu itself a hundred years ago. This time around in COVID, we have a written report from every state and union territory in the country in the food ministry that there have been no reported starvation death in any part of India, in the remotest corners of India. I remember as a young child when my mother used to take me to tribal areas, we used to be pained to hear that there were families who had maybe one or two sadis in the family. And all the women folk of the family could not come out of their house at the same time for lack of clothing. It was a pitiable situation, unacceptable to any of us sitting here. Today, I don't think there is any part of the country where clothing is a problem. It's affordable, available, and across the country, you, business persons, have ensured the availability of clothing across the length and breadth of India. <laughs> Prime Minister Modi appreciated that a home is a cherished treasure for every Indian, every Indian family. We are all privileged who are assembled here in this room that somebody in our family, maybe you, maybe somebody one or two or three generations back, got an opportunity to maybe board a train or a bus, leave the village, come to city, come to and get an opportunity to have a very good education, good opportunities. We still have millions who did not get the opportunity to board that train. Prime Minister Modi has that sensitive concern that every family should have their own home. Nearly three and a half crore family have been provided with a good home, a pakka house, the cherished dream of every Indian. Imagine three and a half crore families receiving over one and a half lakhs each so that they can be owners of their own home. He was very concerned that women 
And for that matter, it was a concern for everybody. Not getting the benefit of a toilet and basic amenity like a toilet was not available. In half the homes in the country, 50% of the people did not have access to a toilet facility. I think it was a matter of shame that governments came and went for 67 years after independence. Nobody could see the agony, the indignity of our women, of our sisters, of our mothers, of our daughters. Prime Minister Modi had lived difficult times, difficult life. Therefore, on 15th August 2014, one of the first programs he undertook was Swachh Bharat, Clean India. 11 crore 27 lakh toilets were built free of charge across the country so that no sister ever has to live a life of indignity in our country. Friends, I remember as a child, cooking gas connection was a luxury. And half the country, and by that logic, half our homes had the traditional chula, coal or wood chula, because of which the ladies in the home who used to cook were taking in 400 cigarettes in their body, worth of smoke, equivalent smoke. And for the doctors in this room, we recognize how harmful that was for our women folk particularly. Today, nearly 99%, if not 100, have a cooking gas connection in their home. 11 crore additional cooking gas connections are there, free of charge. Ujala scheme. I remember I was sitting there on 15th August 2015 or was it 15th August 2014 when the Prime Minister announced that in the next thousand days he would make sure that every village in the country received electricity there were over 18,000 villages, and most of them, which were left behind, were in remote areas, some on top of hills, some in Jammu Kashmir, some in the northeast, some in dense jungles of Jharkhand and Chhattisgarh. 18,000 villages. Nearly three and a half crore families did not have an electricity connection 67 years after independence. Prime Minister Modi was conscious that electricity is required if this country has to develop. So he had a three-pronged action plan. A, we created a national grid and we are amongst the few countries, large countries, which has a single national grid so that power can flow anywhere in the country, 24 by 7, to ensure adequate power throughout the country. We expanded our transmission and distribution network. B, we expanded our generation capacity, particularly in clean energy, sustainable renewable energy, so that we'll never have a power shortage. We have enough capacity today to give 24-hour power to everybody in the country. All industry, all homes, all offices, everybody can get, farmers, all can get 24-hour electricity and see, we ensure that every home, without discrimination, bina bhed bhaute, will get a free electricity connection. Unlike what used to happen in Karnataka, I remember, in the bad old days, where even to get an electricity connection, there was a rate card or to put up a solar power plant for every megawatt there was a rate card. 
And now those same people want to become chief minister of this state. And Prime Minister Modi, with all these steps, in a way has prepared a nation where people have food, people have clothing, people have shelter, people have free healthcare, 50 crore people, the largest healthcare program in the world in India, Aishman Bharat. People get low-cost medicines through the Jan Aushadi stores. In fact, your very own Anand Kumarji, the Honorable MP from Karnataka, really ramped up the PM Bharatiya Jan Aushadi Pariyojana through which low-cost medicines are available in over 9,200 outlets across the country. So in a way, it's Bangalore's contribution to the country and to our countrymen. With all these basic needs taken care of, free education for all our young children, We have now a nation of aspirational young boys and girls. Today we have a nation of 140 crore people aspiring for a better quality of life, aspiring for the good things of life. They want white goods, they want motorcycles, they want automobiles, they want cars, they want a good smartphone. They want laptops, they want digital connectivity. It is for no reason that the whole world today wants to enter into an FTA with India. Because the market is in India. 140 crore aspirational Indians will buy washing machines, will buy television sets, will buy air conditioners, will buy furnishings, will buy furniture, will set up a good kitchen will improve their homes. Tourists will come to India. We'll need skilled manpower in different fields. Investors are flocking to India for R&D, for innovation, for manufacturing, to enjoy the benefits of India's management to talent pool. And that is why India is today the most sought-after country under Prime Minister Narendra Modi's leadership. Our startups are solving the day-to-day -day problems of our people. The government is working to bring transparency at every level. As they say, India is offering today digital goods to the rest of the world as public goods. Bangalore created UPI, which has today become the envy of the world. I'm told there were nearly 8 billion transactions on UPI within one month, as last reported. 8 billion the highest ever in the world. It's more than China and the US combined we are doing in India. That is also Bangalore's contribution to the world. ONDC, we are developing. It's in beta testing phase. It will democratize e-commerce so that more and more small retailers, small MSMEs, small business people get a chance, not only in India, but in the whole world, to offer their goods and services. COVID, 220 crore vaccines. Who had ever imagined India leading the world when it comes to vaccines? Whether it is developing our own indigenous vaccines, we develop more vaccines than any other country for against COVID and 220 crore free vaccines saved our people. We also exported vaccines to so many poor countries, less developed countries, island countries, Pacific nations, Caribbean nations, 
our neighbors, Nepal, Bhutan, and all of them acknowledge that when they meet us. Because we have a sensitive prime minister who believes in Vasudeva Kutumbakam. The world is our family. And most of these vaccines were given to them free of charge to our friendly countries, our friendly neighbors, our friends across the world. Friends, an aspirational India, an India full of talent, full of capabilities, an India whose incomes are going to increase, an India whose farmers are now producing more, are earning more, who have surplus disposable incomes. This is an India of opportunities. Our GDP, which has grown by about 10 times in the last 25 years, despite all the difficulty, you imagine with the strong foundation of the economy that has been built up, with all the basic needs taken care of and with the aspirations of the people of India being so strong, can you imagine where the Indian economy will be 25 years from now when we celebrate 100 years of independence? We are already moved from 10th rank to 5th rank in our Prime Minister Modi's government's tenure. We'll move from 5th to 3rd in the next 4 or 5 years. But by 2047, when we celebrate 100 years of independence, India will be a developed nation. India will be a nation of an economy which will be in excess of 30, 35 trillion dollars. That's more than 10 times what we are today. And look at the delta of opportunity. And this delta of opportunity is there for all of you to grab, for industry to grab. And we commit ourselves to provide a double engine government in Karnataka. A government that will work hand in hand with the central government, converting all those MOUs in the global investor meet into action, into on the ground implementation, bringing good, transparent, digital technology enabled systems of good governance so that Karnataka also benefits from high technology which we are giving to the nation, where direct benefit transfer, where single window, national single window clearances, where online registrations, online approvals, online renewals, online income tax refunds come to your bank account directly, where over 300 schemes reach the people of India directly into their bank account through DBT, where we have one nation, one ration card, so that 80 crore Indians can get their food grains, free food grains, without a single rupee of corruption. We would like to see Karnataka get an absolute majority government of the BJP. Don't make the mistake you made last time. Don't leave us somewhere in between, so that others can cheat the mandate of the people of Karnataka. A good, strong, single-party government with an absolute majority under the guidance and leadership of Prime Minister Shri Narendra Modi will transform Karnataka will reform processes in Karnataka, will bring technology into governance in Karnataka, and truly speed up the development of Karnataka as a trillion dollar economy. The aim that Chief Minister Basavra Bomaiji has set for the state of Karnataka. Let us work together as one. Let us strengthen Prime Minister Modi's commitment and his efforts to make India a global power. Let us work with the spirit of oneness between Karnataka and the central government. Give back 
a strong government, a single party government, a government that is committed to the welfare of the people of Karnataka and committed to good governance to promote industrial and economic development of Karnataka. Let us bring back development of international business. Let us give our startups a new impetus in Karnataka. You are the principal players of the Amrit Kal, the next 25 years, as we progress to a developed nation. And I would like to thank you for all the humongous contribution, each one of you in industry, in business, as taxpayers, as wealth creators, as developers of goods and services have given to the country. And I do hope we will continue to get that opportunity to work together to make Karnataka the engine of India's growth so that India can become the engine of the world's growth. My best wishes to each one of you. Thank you. Manya Pradhana Modi Pradhana Mantri Modi Kai Balipur.